Howdy folks, Monday Vacant Crow, back here again, this time to talk about not really superhero, superhero queer romance drama, The Infinite Noise by Lauren Shippen. I found out about this novel through a Goodreads recommendation after reading Love From A To Z, which normally you wouldn't think to associate a superhero story with a realistic love story, but it turns out the comparison's pretty apt, and I found the way that both stories deal with mental illness as they relate to people in a relationship pretty similar. The Infinite Noise is part of the Bright Sessions Project, which originally is an audio drama that focuses on a high school therapist called Dr. Bright, who works specifically with people who have manifested superpowers called atypicals. I haven't listened to the audio drama yet, although reading The Infinite Noise definitely made me super interested, um, but for what I gather from the novel is that it's a much more intimate, sensitive, and realistic way to look at superpowers and how the people who have them would navigate the world. Overview This novel follows Caleb, a young high school football star who has recently developed the superpower of extreme empathy and Adam, a nerdy kid in all the AP classes who has a pretty severe crush on Caleb as the two crawl their way through the horrible slog that is high school drama, mental illness, and the revelation that superheroes are, well, real. Immediately I was drawn into this novel when finding out about it, things like Raising Dion and The Runaways and the recent Spider-Man films that take superhero concepts and insert them into very small-scale stories that dive and delve right into the more humanistic side of the genre are some of my absolute favorites. When you lower the stakes of genre fiction like this, the criteria for making something good suddenly shifts from how can I write a superhero story to how can I write a coming-of-age story or how can I write a family story or in the case of The Infinite Noise, how can I write a romance story? And in this way, the more you explore comics and comic-related media, you find that superhero is less of a genre and more of a, a setting point. And that allows authors to forego the, the super high stakes that have come to, become, to, to be known tip, as typical within the genre and tell these stories that are devastatingly close to home. And The Infinite Noise succeeds wholeheartedly in that regard. Uh, not just as a standalone novel did I find myself empathizing with and relating to its characters uh, and getting pulled into their relationship, but also, as part of a larger project, it made me hungry for more. Plot and characters. As I mentioned before, Caleb and Adam are the main focus of the novel. It's a, a very familiar and even stereotypical archetype, the, the jock and the nerd falling for one another and it's Caleb's ability that tilts the emotional scales into new territory. See, it's not that Caleb is simply uh, very empathetic, it's that he can actually feel the emotions of people around him, to the intensity with which sometimes he can't even discern other people's emotions from his own. This hypersensitivity and unconscious intrusiveness makes it difficult for Caleb to control his own emotions. If he's angry, and someone he's near is angry, then suddenly he's feeling twice the anger, and then it just it grows exponentially until he suddenly can't control himself anymore. Now on its own, the concept is interesting, but through the novel's form, it isn't just interesting, it adds to the depth of the characters and the story. Shippen jumps back and forth from Caleb and Adam from chapter to chapter, though it isn't a perfect one-to-one, -one, which I ended up quite liking, because the repetition of narrator in certain chapters ended up driving home particular emotional beats, or even occasionally just delivering the, a solid joke. Nonetheless, by diving into Caleb's mind, a lot of the side characters who otherwise would have felt shallow suddenly reveal themselves to have hidden depths. I particularly liked the interactions Caleb has with Caleb and Adam's mutual friend, Caitlin Park. Caitlin is a uh, this stereotypically smart and popular, she has a, a crush on Caleb, but when she interacts with Caleb, we get to see her in her insecurities and anxieties 
and her actual confidence is the thing she she truly is confident about and the nuance makes her feelings uh, feel much more real and the insight almost makes the almost instantly makes these the characters who are already likable even more likable and the the sinister characters that much more detestable it needs to be said more as a disclaimer than anything because i loved this aspect of the book but some of the reviews i saw were people disappointed to find that not much happens in the novel uh, what I mean by that is this book is 100% emotion and character. A lot of the conflicts that pre present themselves are either A, within Adam and Caleb's own minds, or B, resolved pretty quickly. There are no villains, um, really. There are certainly unpleasant people and characters I wish would simply go fart in a hole somewhere, but this isn't a story about Caleb and Adam overcoming anything, or defeating anything. It's a story about them falling in love, and so that's what the book is about. I will say that Adam does receive less character development than Caleb, but that's not a criticism so much as it is to say that this is more Caleb's story than Adam's story. We do, however, get to see Adam's perspective, and it adds a lot to the dynamic between the two characters, particularly highlighting the, some of the more interesting and distressing revelations when Caleb starts to wonder if his attraction toward Adam isn't really his own, but is actually the residual effects of Adam's own feelings. The concept of having to, to, to sieve through all of the differing emotions you feel and, and find the ones that are actually you is one that's, that's pretty effect affecting and serves as the foundation for some of the more nuanced and, and heady conceptual aspects of the book. Through Adam's eyes, we do get to see his experience with mental illness. And through Caleb's ability, we get to see Shippen attempting to show someone feeling secondhand depression. It's interesting. I have depression, and I know people who have depression, but I also know that it's an incredibly diverse disorder. No two people experience it the same way. And so, while I can, I can relate to what someone may be feeling, while I can imagine what someone is feeling, I'll never be able to truly understand what's happening inside of a person's mind, you know, no matter how much we, we talk about it or we, we analogize it. So the idea of actually feeling someone else's emotions beyond simply empathizing with them allows Shippen's analysis of mental illness to step in a bit into the realm of speculative, and it's a really cool concept that carries throughout the book. Themes. This is a novel, much like Love from A to Z, in that the themes that it deals with are just as important as they are entertaining. Shippen doesn't just give us two people who fall in love and then wipe her hands and walk away. Throughout the novel, she's determined to show us the, the pertinence of communication in a relationship, and how having mental illness or allegorically a superpower can affect your, your powers of communication, your relationship with someone, and the ways that a lack of communication can wheedle away at even the strongest relationships. A main aspect of this book shows us the importance of therapy. Good gosh, golly darn people, therapy is so important and I wish it were free, and I love that The Bright Sessions is entirely predicated on almost all of its main cast being in therapy with a therapist who genuinely cares about them and their concerns. It seems to be one of the main themes of The Bright Sessions project, that even if, or especially because, someone has a superpower, their mental health is just as vulnerable and volatile as anyone else's. Another big theme of the novel seems to be the importance of our connections with other people, and how positive relationships can help us cope with mental illness. It left me with a, a really strange feeling when I saw a lot of people complaining that the novel wasn't big or epic enough, because I thought, why is love not epic to us? Why is why is the, the why are these amazing connections not big to us? I feel like we've been trained by a lot of fiction, particularly fantasy, to think that things can't be grandiose unless they they span entire continents or they have forty different characters. We can't quite bring ourselves to look at this quiet story of two young men falling in love and realize that it's just as amazing as defeating, and defeating an, an evil overlord or, or saving the world. More amazing even because, because none of us will ever experience single-handedly saving the world. But almost 
all of us experience falling in love, and a lot of us experience mental illness. And so it's really, really amazing that this novel shows how those positive experiences and positive relationships can help us cope with and overcome those things. Um, it's just a kind of amusing I had, but it does seem to be a pretty important part of the novel's thesis. And finally, it shows us a story wherein two characters' queerness is not viewed as alien, or new, or a, a struggle, something to, to surmount and get through so they can become their real selves. There are aspects of the novel wherein Adam struggles with uh, whether Caleb is even gay or not. Um, and there is, I should warn, an instance of a homophobic slur on the part of a particularly antagonistic side character. But for the most part, the discussion around sexuality in the novel is realistic and not insensitively exaggerated and, and grounded. It's not a story about queer pain, it's a story about the joy of two people who are queer. Conclusion. That's about all I have to say about this book. If it sounds like your cup of tea, as always, I'll have links down in the description on where to find it, including a link to an app called Save Your Bookstore. It's a community-made list of independent bookstores that you can get your books from digitally, or a few of them even online orders. Try to avoid Amazon right now as their strike is still ongoing, and supporting workers, by proxy, is supporting independent authors. Hope y'all enjoyed this little video. Hope to see you later. Read some more books.